So there comes a day mm -hmm. at some point that spring, spring mm -hmm. of 1993. Correct. Where you say Senator Biden and you had an experience in a hallway in one of the Capitol buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you describe what happened that day? Yes, I was, this was during that time where I was kind of frozen out. So I was kind of surprised, but she, but Marianne came rushing in with this bag, like a duffel bag or gym bag, she called it, and said, you know, hurry, the Senator's already on his way. Um, just uh, follow him and try to catch him before the Capitol and give him this, he wants his bag. But I remember going down the Russell Building floors. And so I don't know if I was in the first floor of the, or the basement, but there's, corridors that lead to the Capitol and that kind of thing. And I was trying to catch up with him. And this would I, have been on a weekday. Yes. Okay. And I remember like my heels, like my legs hurting a little and like, you know, there was just from walking really fast. I remember things like that. Um, and then I saw him at a distance. He was talking to someone and they, they walked away the other direction. And then he greeted me. He remembered my name. And then I said, you know, here you go, Senator. I handed him the bag. And it happened very quickly. I remember, I remember being pushed up against the wall um, and thinking the first thought I had was, where's the bag? Which is an absurd thought, but that's what I thought was, the where's the bag? Yeah, because I was handing it to him. And um, he had his hands um, under, underneath my clothes. And, um, it was, it happened all at once. So he had one hand underneath my shirt and the other hand, um, I had a skirt on and he like went down my skirt and then went up. And I remember I was up almost on my tippy toes. And um, when he went inside the skirt, he was talking to me at the same time and he was leaning into me. And I pulled this way away from his head, I remember. And so he was kissing my neck area and he whispered, did I want to go somewhere else? In a low voice. He said some other things. I can't remember everything he said. Um, but he said um, something vulgar. And- Yeah, I ask what? He, he said, I want to fuck you. And he said it low and I was pushing away. And I remember my knee hurting because our knees he, he had opened my legs with his knee and our knees caps clashed. So I felt like the sharp pain. His fingers were inside of my private area, my vagina. And um, it, it wasn't, there was no small talk. There was no like precept. There was, it was just sudden and it was happening like that. And he um, was saying that to me, saying those things to me and I was pulling away. And then he pulled back immediately when he could see I wasn't complying. I was obviously just tensed up and frozen and not kissing him back and not going with him. And he pulled back and he looked at me and he said, come on, man, I, I heard you liked me. And when he said that, it was either I heard or I thought, but I remember hearing heard. When he said that, I immediately started thinking what I did, like how I brought this on. Like, did I say something to somebody? Did I? give an impression, did I, I was just, my mind was racing. And in that moment, I knew this was really bad. I knew I was, it was more than just like the assault. It was really bad. He was then angry, right? And I could feel, it wasn't like yelling angry, but like that hostility build. And he pulled back and he was just looking at me directly and he said, he pointed his finger at me and he said, you're nothing to me. You're nothing. And I, and I think, I, th I think that's the hardest thing. And I know people talk about the assault, but his words, those words stayed with me my whole life. And as I've been trying to tell my story, I kind of been torn apart trying to tell it. Those words come back. And it's like, it was, it was not, it was cruel. So when he saw me obviously start to get upset by what he said, he took me by the shoulders and he just kind of shook me almost like, you know, and said, you know, you're okay. You're all right. Had you said anything to him? I wanted to say stop. And I thought it, I don't know if I said it, but sometimes 
you know, when I ha I've had a couple bad dreams or a few bad dreams about it, I wake up yelling that. I wake up yelling, stop. And then he, um, he didn't look at me again. He picked up the gym bag, he turned around and he walked away and he never looked back. It sounds like it happened in an instant. I would say under three minutes. It was quick. Within moments of seeing you. Right, like there was no, like he's never like engaged me. He never engaged me in conversation or asked me things. He just, he just had me up and, and was, was kissing me and then saying that. When you say that he went down the skirt and then back up, what is that like? Did he go, did he enter the skirt from the top of the skirt? No, um, on the outside. He, he came into the skirt from right. the bottom of the skirt. Right. And were, were you wearing underwear? Um, I, I was wearing lingerie. Underwear, yeah. Okay, and he pushed it to the side. He, there was no block, there were no, yeah, there was no reason, yeah. He was able to do what he wanted to do. And I don't mean to get too graphic. That's okay. But are you saying that they were crotchless when you say that it was lingerie? Like, can I just be clear on, did they, he push the underwear to the side or was that not an issue? That was not an issue. W yeah. Why? Because they were just lingerie panties, like, and I was going to meet my boyfriend later, so, yeah, so. Meaning there wasn't much to them? Right. You know, some people are going to hear this story and they're going to say, you're telling me a U.S. Senator in the middle of the day in a Senate office building committed a sexual assault right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, how can people believe that? I don't really care if people believe it or not. I've had to live with it. And it's just one of those things that's impacted and shattered my life. It changed everything about my life. In that moment, I knew how angry he was and I remember thinking like taking it on myself like thinking I put him in a bad position like maybe he thought I wanted to be with him. Many people look at him and they say you know Joe Biden is a jovial kind warm guy and he couldn't possibly be capable of that level of callousness. To those people what do you say? He is. I'll never forget the calling me nothing and the way he pointed his finger at me, the sternness. And then, you know, when he said, you're okay, you're okay, it's like, he just walked away.